Hello, biology students, and welcome to Chapter 2, Basic Chemistry. Um, we're going to look at our first topic here, which is all matter is composed of chemical elements and what is matter. So if we answer that question, think about that for a minute. What is matter? Remember that uh, at any point, if you need to write something down, you could pause this lecture, write it down in your notes uh, using Cami, and then come back and uh, continue on with the lecture. So anyway, matter is anything with both mass and volume. Remember that mass is the quantity of matter in an object measured in grams, and volume is the amount of space occupied by matter. So all matter is composed of chemical elements. And elements, remember, are composed of atoms. So when we relate that to living things, there are six elements that are basic to life on Earth. The six elements include carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And if you look at their atomic symbols, uh, C-H-N-O-P-S, a good way to remember that is the chinops. So chinops are the six elements that are essential to life. So basically, an element in itself is a substance that cannot be degraded by chemical means into a substance having different properties. Every element has a name, and ele every element also has an atomic symbol. The smallest particles that retain the properties of any element are what we call an atom. And no two elements that are differ different share the same atom. So each atom is specific to its very own element. So if we look, atoms contain subatomic particles. The two main parts of an atom include both the nucleus and the electron shells. The nucleus is the center of the atom where almost all the mass is located. Surrounding the nucleus are the electron shells, or sometimes referred to as the orbitals. Um, the electron shells or orbitals are the areas surrounding the nucleus where the electrons are located. There are three subatomic particles found in an atom. These subatomic particles are the proton, electron, and neutrons. Protons are positively charged particles located in the nucleus of an atom. Protons have a mass, and they have a charge that is positive. I would write that down. So protons have a positive charge. Electrons are negatively charged particles located in the electron cloud, or the shells or orbitals. Electrons have so little mass that they are not considered when determining the mass of the overall atom. And then lastly, there are neutrons, and neutrons are neutrally charged. That means they have no charge. These are neutrally charged particles located in the nucleus of the atom along with the electron, I mean, along with the proton, sorry. The mass of a neutron is equal to that of a proton. So when we go back and consider the nucleus of the atom, the, the, the mass of the atom is basically at its nucleus where you have both these subatomic particles, the protons and the neutrons, that have equal mass. Surrounding that nucleus of the atom, the electrons have little no mass and therefore are not taken into consideration when determining the mass of an atom. So here's a chart to summarize. Protons, a positive charge, atomic mass of one, found in the nucleus. Neutrons have zero charge or are neutral have an atomic mass of one also found in the nucleus. And electrons have a negative charge. Each electron has a minus one charge. Its atomic mass is zero, and it's found in the electron shells or orbitals that surround the nucleus of an atom. So what you're looking at here, this would be an electron cloud representation of an atom. And in that central atom right here, this is what the nucleus would be. And the nucleus is where you have those positively charged protons as seen in orange and the neutrally charged neutrons as seen in green here. Surrounding this, because it's an electron cloud model, you have the possible areas of where electrons can be located. 
Remember that electrons have a negative charge, so ultimately they're going to be attracted to the nucleus, which is positively charged because opposite charges attract. So when you look at an electron cloud model, you have a, a greater density of electrons closer to the nucleus, therefore the electron cloud is going to be darker. And as you move away from the nucleus, the electron cloud is going to get lighter because the electrons are being um, are found further away from that nucleus at a lesser density. This representation, uh, this shell uh, is, is the atomic model showing the proton, neutron, and the electrons. And because the electrons are in fixed positions surrounding the nucleus, this is something that we refer to as a Bohr model. And we'll go over some examples of Bohr models a little later. So an atomic model of carbon includes this. If you look at the carbon atom, down here is what you'd see on the periodic table. So we have the elemental name. We have its atomic symbol, which is a capital C. The atomic mass, which is 12.00. And the atomic number, which is 6. So if we look, the atomic number is going to tell us the number of protons and the number of electrons of an atom that is not chemically bonding. So the atomic number will always give you the number of protons, but it will also give you the number of electrons if that atom is not chemically bonding with itself or another atom. So in this case, we have six protons and we should have six electrons. Let's count them. In the first orbital, we have two. In the second orbital, we have four. Four plus two is six. Now, in the center of the atom at its nucleus, we also have six neutrons. To determine the number of neutrons in the nucleus of the atom, you take the atomic mass and subtract the atomic number. So 12 minus six gives you six neutrons. Now, what happens when you start to change the number of subatomic particles in an atom? Well, one of the things that you could change is the number of neutrons. And atoms of a single element that are going to differ in their number of neutrons are called isotopes. So isotopes have the same number of protons, but because you are changing the number of neutrons, their atomic mass is going to change. The atomic mass is going to tell you the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus of that atom. So if we look, some isotopes of an element are what we consider radioactive. And radioactive isotopes have many medical uses. For example, in research, in biology, in, in, in medicine, low-level isotopes are small amounts of radiation that can be used as tracers, and they allow doctors to see inside the body. At higher levels, which is a lot of radiation, Higher levels will cause damage to the DNA and kill cells. An example, this can be used to kill pathogens and to treat diseases like cancer, um, getting that uh, uh, radiation treatment to kill those cancer cells. So that's it for our lesson today. We're going to do some practice with um, atomic models, uh, Bohr models, and looking at the periodic table. So thank you for your time, and I will see you soon.